This bad boy is a Micron 5300 Pro 2.5 inch SATA SSD. Specifically, this one is a whopping 7.68 terabytes in capacity, and my friend bought this for just £230. I know, it sounds like a scam, right? Well, much to my surprise, it actually isn't. This enterprise drive launched in 2019 and likely retailed for somewhere between £1,500 and £2,000 with used examples on eBay asking for around £600 right now. So why is this one so cheap? Can you buy one? Let me explain. First off, what even is this drive? Micron, the owners of Crucial, are a tier 1 memory maker, as in they actually design and build the NAND flash chips that are in this thing. Micron themselves tend to do the more enterprise products, leaving the consumer grade stuff to Crucial. So this being an enterprise drive, well, makes a lot of sense. The 5300 line launched in 2019, with both M.2 and SATA form factors, with this, the 5300 Pro, being the highest capacity drive that they made. Being a SATA drive, you're looking at at most 600 megabytes per second of maximum, although Micron rated this for 540 megabytes in reads and 520 megabytes in writes, which is pretty standard of a actually pretty decent SATA SSD. Of course, we'll be testing to see what the real-world performance is like in a second. The two most interesting ratings for me, though, are the endurance and the mean time before failure figures. The endurance rating is a full 9 petabytes written, and the mean time before failure is 3 million device hours. For context, that is 1,172 full drive writes to reach that endurance rating, and 342 years of powered on operation before the average Micron 5300 Pro fails. They've sure rated this thing like it's going to survive an apocalypse. But, I mean, that's what you get when you buy enterprise hardware. I think it's actually worth taking a look inside here as well. I mean, this thing is hefty. Not like today's modern drives that have two terabytes of capacity built into a single chip, like the Crucial P310 that I reviewed recently, video on the cards above. So what's taking up all that mass in here? Well, it is a full drive of double-sided PCB2 with 16 total Micron 96-layer NAND flash packages combined with a Marvell 88SS1074 controller. You've also got 8GB of NAND flash, I assume either as a cache or perhaps as a lot of, sort of power loss prevention storage. Those Micron packages work out to be 480GB apiece, which does make a lot of sense. Although it is kind of interesting to see their newer 196 layer NAND is seemingly quadruple the density, packing 2TB into one chip rather than 480GB. Still, this is a lot of NAND. And, well, it seems some pretty high quality stuff too. So, why is this thing so cheap? Well, it's hard to say why CEX, which, shockingly, they insist you channel your inner 13 year old and pronounced sex, I kid you not, uh, has priced this so shockingly low. But what I do know is that, at least at the time of filming, they have more than one of these in stock that you can buy online at £230 no less. Hypothetically, you are taking a risk that you might be buying a drive that's on its last legs. Although frankly, with the endurance and meantime before failure ratings, I'd kind of doubt it. But as further proof, let's take a look at Crystal Disk Info. This is by far the most shocking thing. This drive has only been powered on 10 times total, two of which were me and my friend. This was clearly put in a server and has run basically non-stop for 23,500 hours. That's a little under a thousand days, or a bit over two and a half years. In that time, it only had around 14 terabytes written to it. That's basically only two drive writes in total. That's literally nothing. A, a rounding error on this thing's endurance rating. There is nothing here that could be even considered worrying. No errors, no bad sectors, nothing. It's effectively a brand new 
8 terabyte solid state drive for the price of, what, a 2 terabyte NVMe drive? What's not to love? Of course, performance wise, well, that's where this thing kind of starts to show its age. Being a SATA drive, it isn't exactly top notch, with the connection itself capping out at 6 gigabits per second compared to 128 gigabits per second on PCI Gen 5, or more realistically, 32 gigabits per second on a PCI Gen 3 drive. That means that you get, at least in this case, around 534 megabytes per second in reads and 526 megabytes per second in writes in Crystal Disk Mark, which for a SATA drive is actually pretty decent. Interestingly, looking at the ATTO disk benchmark results, you can see just how bandwidth limited this thing is. It reaches its peak really early and pretty much stays there. With a faster connection, I see no doubt that this could run faster, although thanks to the 16 nan flash packages, I understand why Micron capped the M.2 form factor at 2 terabytes. While transferring files, it sat around about 400 megabytes per second, and duplicating files is more like 250 megabytes per second. That all checks out, and the temperatures were on the decent side too. One interesting number that Hardware Info reported was the total drive reads. That sat at just 122 terabytes, which brings us nicely onto where the hell did this thing come from? While we will never know for sure, my best guess is that this was bought in probably early 2020, installed in a server, likely as part of an array, and used basically non-stop for three years. The server rebooted maybe six times in total in those years, and then the server was decommissioned and either swapped for cloud storage or upgraded to NVMe drives instead. This drive was likely sold to a tech recycler who wiped it and then, and this is arguably the most confusing step, sold it to CEX for pennies on the dollar. Like I said, even with this thing being a used, older SATA drive, you should still expect to pay hundreds, like £600, for a drive like this. So the fact that CEX is selling these for just £230 means that they must have bought it for more like £150 per drive. That's pretty crazy. So, at least while stocks last anyway, should you buy one of these 8TB Enterprise drives used? Well, buying enterprise equipment in general is often a pretty good deal, as you tend to get the most reliable, performant, and feature-rich versions of whatever it is you're buying. In this case, this is an SSD that should outlive you and about five more generations to come, at least in time, uh, terms of the mean time before failure. And frankly, if you manage to do a thousand full-scale drive rights to this, well, more power to you. But uh, something like your system drive, sure it isn't lightning fast like NVMe's, but I mean, this would be amazing. There'd be no need for a small boot drive and a bigger games drive. This is a one and done solution for the same price as a decent single SSD. Who cares that your games might load 0.2 seconds slower when you can store all of your games at once all on one drive? Or maybe don't use it in your PC. Maybe buy two of them and stick it in a home network storage server. It will more than saturate gigabit ethernet. Hell, 2.5 gig too. And for just £460, you get 8 terabytes of low power, high reliability storage. I mean, what's not to love? So, there you have it. This is remarkably not a scam and a ridiculously good value. If you're interested, I will leave the CEX link in the description. That's not an affiliate link, but, you know, if you want one, feel free to take a look. If you do want to support the channel, you can hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this one, or check out the rest of the links in the description, including to my very own hardware tools, the open source latency testing tool and open source response time tool, available at osrtt.com. And you can also check out plenty of other videos on the end cards too, including that crucial P310 review. Otherwise, uh, feel free to let me know what you think of this 8 terabyte ridiculously cheap drive in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.